I'm delighted to introduce Peter Mortimer, who's appeared at Lytton Phil on many occasions. He's a prolific writer of plays, poetry and fiction. He is an editor, a traveller, a publisher, and he has, of course, been running the Iron Press since 1973. When the first lockdown kicked in in March last year, he began to write a daily column in the Newcastle Journal. After the first 75, he collapsed in a heap and continued with only two a week. Planet Corona, which is published by Iron Press, contains the first 100 columns. And so tonight we're in for a treat as Peter reads a selection from the collection. Over to you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kay. Uh, it's great for me to be doing something for the Lytton Phil, actually, which uh, we've had a long relationship with. Iron Press, uh, and it's a unique establishment. If you don't know it, it is a unique establishment in many ways. So delighted, even though we're not within the bowels of the building, uh, I'm just in the Iron Press room, um, it's a lit and fill event. So this is the little book, if you don't know it, um, hopefully some of you do know it, um, which is, and this is the first hundred columns. I, I started writing this, it was just a whim. I, I walked in the bank, um, the start of lockdown, and I uh, with a mask on and walked up to the counter and nobody blinked an eye. I thought, this is a bit weird, a masked man walking up to the counter in a bank and nobody blinking an eye. I thought, the world is changing. Um, and I think I'd quite like to write about it. So I sort of contacted the journal and they said, yeah, how often do you want to do it? And I simply said, well, how about every day? Um, so they said, all right. So I did that for about 70 columns. I, it was then only about 250 words. Uh, and as Kay said, I kind of fell over after about 70 odd columns. Uh, and couldn't do any more. I said, I'm packing it in. And being a man of firm resolve, three days later, I thought, I'm missing it. Um, so I contacted the journal again and said, well, maybe we could do it differently and I could do it twice a week, but a bit longer. So they said, they're very accommodating. They said, okay. So I did it Saturday and a Wednesday. And that took, and then we did the book and it kept going. And I think I did it then up to, um, 150 columns, and I said to uh, Richard Kirkman of the Journal and the print editor, I think I'll probably give it a pause now. I don't know what happened, but I think I should pause and see what happens. So I left it there for about two or three weeks. Uh, I think it was a month, actually. Then I got back to him. I said, how about we do it now a different way again? I'll just do it once a week, but it'll be longer. It'll be about 700 words. So that's the way it is now. And it, it appears every Saturday um, in the Journal. And then it appears on my Facebook page the same day, a bit later. So uh, I get some reaction to it, which is nice. It's mainly favourable, but I've got one really vituperative man who about every month or so fires off things like, how much more of this drivel must we tolerate? <laughs> he's not here, I don't think. No, no, <laughs> he's not here. But anyway, um, I, I, I always like to get reactions anyway uh, if anybody wants to react to it in the journal or more likely on the Facebook page actually and I have, have a di regular discourse with several uh, some people who are here now actually uh, and we exchange views and witticisms as well there's some very witty people out there commenting on my column um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to read a few uh, in chronological order and they, these are they all sort of relate to one phase in the pandemic and sort of firing off from one phase and reacting to something that's been happened, that's something that happened in the pandemic. And this first one is when there was uh, all the furore about statues and pulling down statues and Black Lives Matter, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I usually go off on an angle, um, which, I, well, here we are. Well, I think I better just read it. Um, and this, let, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the date each time as well, if you want historical relevance. This was, this was Saturday, June the 13th. 13th. Here we go. The news is now dominated by two items, the coronavirus and Black Lives Matter. The frustration of the former feeding in the anger of the latter. So in a way, the two come together like a brace of cells merging one into the other. We feel helpless, mainly in the face of this minuscule, seemingly omnipotent bug mocking and taunting us on a daily basis. The frustration only exaggerates the justifiable outrage we already feel at the shocking murder of George Floyd. The combustible mix spreads as quick as a forest fire. And here, with this cold-blooded, highly public murder, is something we can at least effect. 
Huge protests take place in cities worldwide. Well, then more, the tearing down of statues of individuals, all male, who are seen to profit from slavery and the exploitation of the oppressed. Why bother erecting statues of real people? Most look ridiculously pompous and are ignored 99% of the time, becoming merely bombing targets for pigeons. Humans are fallible, complex creatures, mainly a mix of good and bad that defies statue deification, sanctification. We even have the phrase to put someone on a pedestal, which implies an oversimplification of another person's character. Let's forget the whole ritual. Much better we employ our sculptors in less reverent, more imaginative tasks. Possibly fictional characters, animals, real or imaginary, sci-fi critters. How about a statue of alien in the city centre? Or modern creations such as the much-loved Angel of the North, which speaks to us in the way few statues can. I love those floor-level statues of normal folks striding out opposite Newcastle Central Station, or that strange hunched beastie looming outside Gateshead Metro. More like those, please, and fewer plinths. Um... This next piece, I started thinking about drugs, the names of drugs, um, and how strange they were, the names of drugs. So here we go. And this was February, June 19th. And Andy Waterworth should listen to this one because he's mentioned in it. He's out there somewhere. And thus, a cheap British drug. This, by the way, is before AstraZeneca came on the scene, but there was talk of possibly a, a drug. And thus a cheap British drug could save the world from the corona curse, or at least offer a helping hand. Dexamethasone is a steroid. Steroids were always seen as slightly suspect medicines we were advised to stay away from. Bodybuilders, we were told, used them illegally. The side effect was turning bodies into grossly inflated balloons. This new drug comes from Oxford, which is somehow more reassuring than saying West Allotment, though I have no idea why. West Allotment has a lively working men's club and their football team, West Allotment Celtic, inspired by their famous Scottish namesakes, play in green hoops. The only English club to do so, as far as I know. My mate Andy Waterworth is a keen fan and in more usual times often contacts me Saturday evenings to give me the latest games report. I've been meaning to, for some time to write to the football club's secretary suggesting they slightly rewrite and adopt as the fans anthem, the chorus to the country and western song, Take Me Home, Country Roads, which almost everyone knows. Substitute the words West Allotment for West Virginia, and there you have it. Consider for a moment the culture of drug names and the reasons thereof. The convention is that almost all such names are long-winded, and the five-syllable Dexamoth, me thesone is no exception. I have it on good authority, i.e. a hunch, that 80% of all English language words in general use are three syllables or fewer. A quick check on this paragraph reveals only two words, apart from the drug itself, in excess of three. Need I say more? I await, in vain no doubt, the announcement of a new drug called George. Uh, if you remember, there was quite a, a furore when the proms were on about what they should sing, the people who, who were there. Um, and this is a little bit about this and the, the ritual of the proms. It's a very English tradition and uh, I'm, I'm sort of ambivalent about it. I suppose most people are it's quite ridiculous in some ways. Um, the strange ritual of our archaic communal songs. This is on Saturday, September the 5th. With the pandemic still on the loose, there's much fuss around the proms and the singing, or not, of our two tub-thumping slices of patriotism, land of hope and glory and rule Britannia. Do we risk, in our lusty bellowing, inadvertently spitting the deadly germ over fellow audience members? Or is this merely the smokescreen tactic of those seeing the whole thing as dangerous nonsense anyway. It's hard to deny that many of the two songs' words come over as jingoistic tosh. They may also use, uh, they also use a linguistic currency that no one now speaks. Well, maybe the Amish religious movement, but few others. 
the verses are liberally sprinkled with thee, thy, th thou, and thine, not to mention the occasional er uh and or. Uh. The tone is a bit dodgy too, with such lines as, when Britain first at heaven's command arose from out the azure main, which makes it sound suspiciously like we are God's chosen people. And we all know where that kind of thing can lead. There's a similar ambition for the divine preference in land of hope and glory line. God who made thee mighty, make thee mightier yet. This is then repeated in case God didn't hear the first time round. And also to let our enemies know we've got a direct line to heaven for reinforcements. Some years ago, along with other writers, I was commissioned to rewrite the words of several hymns in a more modern currency. I enjoyed this. It felt like taking a vigorous broom to a very dusty cupboard, and I hope did not destroy the importance of the sentiments. Will future generations look back on this strange prom finale with wry amusement and think, did we really sing that? Or maybe no one listens much to the words anyway. Well, here's an idea. Keep those stirring tunes. But prior to next year, run a competition for new, more relevant lyrics. Words to inspire us, but in less sabre-rattling, breast-beating, archaic fashion. I'd be up for that. And these days, we all need to sing. <laughs> That's a thumbs up from Joan Hewitt. Thank you for that. Um, which we do. We all need to sing anyway. Um, Sometimes being a playwright, um, I sometimes dramatize my articles and do little playlets or comic scenes. Uh, it's quite funny because you never quite know. I never, well, I don't think any writer does anyway, know what they're going to write about next. Uh, but certainly when it's something that comes around regularly as a column, I never have an, an idea really what I'm going to write about next from one column to the other. Uh, but you just have to have some faith that somewhere in there you'll find something to write about and it's it's as, as other writers would say it's often a small seed that it starts with uh the, the real little germ of an idea and there is a kind of writer's instinct that i think most writers have that when you get that you think aha even though it is a tiny little thing you think i can pursue that i can take that somewhere and uh it's a good moment then off you go but when you don't get it, it's a bloody awful moment, <laughs> which happens quite a lot. So this is another one. Uh, this is a one, a dramatised one. This is, I think, I think this sprang from um, when I read about just how stressed all the doctors were, uh, as well as the patients in the pandemic. So I just set this little one in, in, in a doctor's surgery. Uh, a patient, uh, not in a surgery, sorry, this is when it all went online. So it, this is all online, not in a surgery. Uh, in practice, a patient is talking to the doctor online. Patient. Everything just seems to be getting worse, doc. Doc, really? I'm totally confused. No one can go anywhere, do anything, meet anyone. Are we expected to just sit in a room and stare at the cat? Doctor. You're looking to have a cat. So these new restrictions are having side effects then. Patient, oh, I'm bewildered. I keep vomiting all the time. I, I fall asleep 15 times a day. I get backache, I have double vision. I keep shouting out cardboard for no reason. I've lost my right nipple. And I regularly miss the 48 bus. Doc. <laughs> You've fallen asleep, doctor. Oh, I'm sorry. It keeps happening these days. The stress of this pandemic is sending me loopy. Sometimes I think I can't take any more. Patient, you too, eh, Doc? Doc, I bit my wife this morning. Then I put the cocoa pops in the spin dryer and stood on my head in the wheelie bin. Patient, I often stand in the corner of the room and scream. Doctor, does your wife say anything? Patient, she's screaming in the opposite corner. Doctor. Some people find gardening good therapy. Converse with a gladiola, you know, that kind of thing. And patient. <laughs> Doctor, now you've fallen asleep. Patient. So, sorry, it, it, it just keeps happening these days. Doctor. Anyway, gardening. Patient. Well, I, 
I did try mowing the front lawn. Doctor, any good? Patient, not really. I'd forgotten we had it paved over last year. Has anyone got the remotest idea of how we should handle all this lot? Doctor, have you tried centipods? Patient, no. Doctor, me neither. Patient, is there any hope for the planet, Doctor? Doctor, well, we could get hit by a giant asteroid. Bang! That would put us out of our misery. Patient, they said this would all be over by Christmas. Doctor, that's what they said about the Ice Age. Patient, is, is coronavirus just toying with us, Doctor? Maybe the human race's time is up. Doc, well, your time's up anyway. Thank you. Clicks on to the next patient. So there we go. <laughs> There's another one uh, which employs that same method, um, which is, is a Christmas one. Although it was written at the end of October, um, it is actually a Christmas one. Um, so this goes like this. A knock at the front door revealed Father Christmas. Two meters, please, I said, motioning him back. What, but rub, rub this hand gel on, I said, pointing to the container. Yeah, okay, but put this mask on, I said. He had a bit of trouble getting it round his copious beard. To tell the truth, he looked a bit ridiculous, but just about managed. What do you want, I asked. I'm confused, he said. Well, we're all confused. I said, I'm confused. My neighbours are confused. The lollipop lady's confused. The prime minister's confused. Sometimes I think even my goldfish is confused. You know, a goldfish? No, it's a joke, I said. The only person who doesn't seem confused right now is sitting in the White House. This is still a Trump era. What? The orange maniac. But then the insane often seem to have a deluded lucidity. Anyway, what's your gripe, Claus? What the hell's happening with Christmas, he asked. Is it cancelled? It still wasn't. <laughs> Who knows, I said. No, I need to know, he said. That's why I've come ahead on this recce. I need to plan my timeline, my production schedule, my labour force. Labour force? 2,000 elves. How did he get here, I asked. I rode bareback on dancer, he said. Now I've got a really sore arse. Suddenly, I realised a large reindeer was eating my tiny flower patch. Where's the sleigh? I asked. It's been serviced. You might need to isolate for 14 days, I said. What's your bubble? Bubble? Never mind. You look frozen. You'd be bloody frozen as well on the back of that reindeer. Look, I said. I shouldn't really do this, but you can come in, sit the far end of the room, and I'll give you a cup of tea. I usually get a glass of sherry and a mince pie, he said. Don't push it, Claus, I said. So is Christmas happening this year or not? He asked. Well, sort of. Call it a Corona Christmas. And what about me? What, going into 15 million different houses? Some in tier three? Mm, I'd forget it. Stay home. What's the great escape? Phew, that's a relief. A year off from this lot. And with one bound, Santa and Dancer were gone. There we go. I, I thought I'd also uh, read you some. I, I thought I'd read you. There's a one in progress, which is for the next week. Uh, so now I do it weekly. I kind of pace myself and do bits here and there. And it changes a bit. But I've, I've got one sort of in progress. People say to writers, never read work in progress to public reading. But this is, it's, it's, it's not a full column, but it's, it's part of it. And uh, I thought I'd read it to you. So this is beyond, it's now called Beyond Planet Corona, by the way, uh, the column. And this is Beyond Planet Corona for Saturday, May the 1st, or the first two thirds of it. Here's the irony of the week. India, the world's largest manufacturer of the coronavirus vaccine, also records the world's largest number of virus deaths. Meantime, I have been musing over Dominic Grieve's withering put down of the Prime Minister as a vacuum of integrity. Political insults are always good fun, and the one I recall best is Dennis Healy's description of debating with Tory politician Geoffrey Howe as like being savaged by a dead sheep, which in addition to being insulting has the bonus of being humorous, 
and also a smattering of surrealism, not normally associated with politicians. A vacuum of integrity, though, is more versatile, and I feel someone is missing a trick here. Now, if I were the advertising manager of either Hoover or Dyson, I'd have those words up on the hoardings and in the TV adverts, pronto as the latest sales slogan, a vacuum of integrity. Those four words delivered as an insult can magically become positive. Hang on, though. On second thoughts, given the present associations, maybe we should leave the name Dyson out of this and just stick with Hoover. Talking of advertising slogans, I once made up this two word example, which I sent to a famous giant car rental firm in case they wanted to use it. I was expecting no money and offered it in good spirit, but they never replied. Here it is. Love hurts. What do you think? I see. <laughs> I probably why they didn't reply. <laughs> anyway, love hurts. Meantime, I've been in a North Sea first time this year. The shock of the intensely cold water saw me staggering about like a punch drunk boxer, stumbling and falling in a manner to alarm a passing beach stroller who shouted to inquire whether I was dying. I was tempted to reply with a hint of philosophical insight, we are all dying, but I didn't. Agreed, I was slightly worried about the chance of a heart attack and the fact that my body appendages seemed to have disappeared in retreat from the Arctic onslaught. Why had I not wondered why, with the exception of a few wetsuit-clad surfers at the beach's southern end, not a single person had been foolhardy enough to venture even a big toe, not to mention a full body into this freezing hell. I'd been fooled by the blue sky. The virus apparently has seen the rush of people wanting to move to the coast. My own theory, this is partly motivated by, an motivated by an instinctive feel that with the huge skies, wide open spaces and almost constant fresh winds, that pesky virus is more likely to be dissipated here than in some overcrowded suburb. The theory may be without much logic, of course, but as the poet W.B. Yeats put it, by logic and reason we die, by imagination we live. A slightly romantic view of the human race, but the poet Billy has a point. That's as far as I've got with this thing. <laughs> I, think I'll, I think I'll kind of open it up if people, I might read another one in a few minutes, but if anybody wants, if there's any chats or anything, I don't know if there are. Are there any chats? No, no chats. If anybody wants to say anything, they're more than welcome. Or they can all stay stum. <laughs> I've never known you all be so quiet. Talk amongst yourselves a minute, I'll read you another one. Joan, did you want to say something? Yes, um, the only thing I didn't get and relish was Love Hurts. Is it a <laughs> reference? Is it a reference to a product? Yes, Hurts Cars, H-E-R-T-Z. I'm so sorry, I'm from Liverpool and we didn't have cars, we just had cars. <laughs> <laughs> and also the Roy Orbison song, Love Hurts. Yeah. So it's cars, I bet that hurts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they probably thought the same as you. <laughs> Your best jokes are falling flat because we're all muted, I think. Oh, ah, right. I've just unmuted myself to tell you that, but I was laughing at Love Hurts. Oh, right. I look, you, look, you look so sad when nobody laughed. Well, I must admit, gales of laughter were not peeling through the <laughs> No, yeah. we, we, what, yeah, I know we're what all it <laughs> one, one, we're all mute, but also when I went to the chat function, I can only chat to Kay, not to everyone. Yeah. You chatted to I me. Don't know if that's, I don't know if that's what everybody's the same. Well, I, I thought, I know what a comedian feels like now, Sunderland Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Sid James. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, he actually has bad taste. He died there, didn't he? He did. <laughs> not for the first time. <laughs> is, every, well, is everybody else unmuted now? Hello, Pete. Hello, Alex. That's my brother. Hey. You're not... Yeah. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. I'm here. You can oh. see my brother, Nathan. He's the ugly one. He's much younger than me. But, uh, he'll end up as good looking as me eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Pete. Hello, Judd. Very good. 
So you um, still, are you still a postman, Alex? I was a postman. I know you were. You were one of my favourite postmen. Hey, don't tell anybody else. Okay. Yeah. You. <laughs> you and Pat. Yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read one more before it gets too juicy. <laughs> Are you muted still? This is one about this came about this one from um, one of the slogans they had during the during the pandemic. Uh, you'll pick it up as it goes along. I awoke and saw at the end of the bed a spectral figure in a wide brimmed hat. I have to watch out for that cocoa. I thought. Who are you then? I asked. I am the ghost of Lord Baden-Powell, he said. Founder of the Boy Scouts movement. Didn't you write scouting for boys? I asked. <laughs> I did. I always thought that was a bit of a dodgy title, I said. What do you want? This new slogan, stay alert. Well, what about it? It's been stolen from my own slogan, be prepared. And I demand compensation. I doubt that, I said. Anyway, they're both useless slogans. I mean, stay alone, we all know what that meant. You thought, yeah, I can do that. What's stay alert mean, except if you're next to an electric fence? Same with be prepared. When? And for what? A stampeding elephant? A plague of locusts? The ghost rose up and gave out a low moan. I could see right through it to the bookcase beyond. Compensation, it exhaled. I must be compensated. Hey, I just realised, I said. Be prepared, Baden-Powell. Same initials. Nice one. No compensation, though. A queue a mile long for government grants. And I am doomed to a life of penury, it asked. Well, you won't be alone, I said. It could very soon be the norm. Ooh! The spectral vision dissolved before my eyes like a cloud of tobacco smoke. Almost time for the shipping forecast, my favourite programme. And the only one guaranteed not to mention the coronavirus. Old Baden Powell, eh? What's he like? So there you are. <laughs> Anybody, are you are you all unmuted now? Yeah, yeah, we're all oh, on. Here's, here's a question and answer one anyway. So oh, if I don't want to speak, please speak. Uh, just interrupt me. This is uh, everything you wanted to know. Do I need to watch the cat? Will the aliens come soon? Thus we ask ourselves, what is going on? Who is to blame and why and when will they stop? Is it the end of civilization as we know it? What about the archers? Is it the Chinese, the Russians, the Koreans, people from West Bromwich, a man in Swindon? Is it Bill Gates, the Pope, Michael O'Leary, Keith Lemon? Is it Jeremy Clarkson? Can we trust Mother Teresa? Is she still alive? Did yeah. I hear you cough? Can we go out? Can we stay in? Is it from outer space? Where is Jacob Rees Mogg? Why is Jacob Rees Mogg? What about <laughs> Trump's hair? Why is his mouth like a bottom? What are all the graphs? Where are all the masks? Does whistling help? Is it aliens? Do I need to watch the cat? Will the aliens come soon? Will they have bug eyes? Will Spielberg make a film? Can I catch this from a dog, a buddy, a goldfish, a gnat, my partner's hairbrush? Does it come up through the sink? Can it live in a beard? What does R stand for? Is Captain Tom still in his garden? What happened to Greta? Should I wear gloves? Can it live on cream buns? Can it swim through water? When does it sleep? What is a COVID? Why 19? Is it from the Bible? Are we being smoked? Should I get up? Can I sneeze? Was that a cough? Can I sing in the street? Where is Benitez? Boris Johnson's nurse? The Salvation Army? Should we pray? <laughs> Should we weep? Drink disinfectant? Write to you and yours. What is to be done? Hey. <laughs> that's, you didn't write that. that, that's Boris Johnson's latest speech, isn't it? <laughs> bravo, bravo. Yeah, bravo. Uh, well, pretty good, Pete. Thank you very much. You've um, learned all I taught you. <laughs> <laughs> um, speak about him. Are you still you're not all muted now? I think, I think Kay should unmute them all. We're unmuted. Do you do requests? Yeah. Sure. Well, what about doing a I mean, bit somebody's of Somebody's that... read my stuff. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, I put up a job, honestly. This is Bob Roden. <laughs> yes, my ex-fool. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what about doing a bit from the last column you ever wrote for the Planet Corona? Either reading it or reading a bit from it. The last, the last one I ever wrote. Yeah. I've just read. Uh, well, I'd have to go and get it because it's not in the oh, book. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'd go and get it. I'll take a minute. Well, could, people could talk amongst themselves. They could. I would literally take a minute. I would have to send then. Yeah. So you mean last Saturdays? No, the, the last... Um... Oh, I don't know what you mean. Explain yourself. Explain yourself. <laughs> do you mean... <laughs> Which one do you mean? The last of the first hundred? Yeah, the last... The, when you gave it up, the, the, when you, you wrote and said you were giving it up, and that was the last column for... And, until you probably started again. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm trying to think. Was that just on Facebook then? Yeah, no, no, no. It's just whether it's in here. Uh, it's when did I give it up? The first oh, no. It, it, I think you didn't. You did the first 100 in the book and then didn't you do 150? Yeah. No, so I, it was the 150th. Yeah, I, didn't give it, I didn't give it up on 100. No, the 150th. That's me explaining myself. No, I can read. I, I can think. read. The, I can. I can read the hundred fiftieth. I can go get that. Do you want me to do that? Don't yeah. go away. I think that was the one. Right. Well, don't go away. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, right. <laughs> Where do you go? Well, that looks much better. <laughs> Who was that? Should all do is hide for when he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> has every has every man on here got a little beard as a result yes. of lockdown? Yes, yeah. we're a tribute act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Peter's a very neat little white one, isn't it? I, I don't know whether you can see my husband here. Can yes, you? excellent. Yeah, that's a nice little one, isn't he? He's never had one. Oh, yours is yours is a bit more around your cheeks. He's got a nice. Little <laughs> very He's 77 and he's never had a beard before in his life. That's weird, isn't it? I hope he's good. Is he going to keep it? Yes. Well, as long as I can, because I'm 77. <laughs> <laughs> Till the end of the week, then. <laughs> yeah, well, or, or until Thursday, if I can manage. Yes. I'm still on the tablets, you know. <laughs> yeah. I haven't I'm got... Looking at, I'm looking at Pete's very fine office there. Yes. I wonder, wonder who paid for it being redecorated. <laughs> <laughs> Only 2.5 million. <laughs> I doubt whether he recognises the word decorated. <laughs> or undecorated. Yes, yeah. undecorated. Yeah. Well done, Peter. Yeah. Nice to see you, Peter. Yeah. Who's that? Who's that? We've been talking about your beard. Oh, right, my beard, right. Yeah. Best wishes from Northamptonshire. Not quite Nottingham. Is that Chaz? It's Elaine and Keith. Oh, right, thank you very much, yes. You see how widespread this column is? All yeah. the way to Northamptonshire. Yeah. This is Northamptonshire, New Jersey, in the United States. <laughs> no, oh, I see. Him, wow. He's lying as usual. <laughs> I'm sure. I found 150th, by the way. Um, here we are, Wednesday, March 24th. You see, being an old fashioned geek, I, I keep them all silly, I paste them all up. I still, I did, I did journal, I'm not really a journalist now, but I was a full time journalist for many years. But I still paste up all my things with cow gum and that, uh, as well as keep them electronically. I like them because so I've got hundreds of files of articles and stuff that the journalism side of me. And here's a 150th. <laughs> And it's got a headline on it. Why we all may come to be grateful to the virus. Oh. Oh. Um, one almost continuous year of lockdown. And in a strange way, despite the human tragedy, the wretchedness, the loneliness, the sense of hopelessness, of anger, bewilderment, the sense of loss and confusion. Behind all this, there will come to be, ridiculous though it may sound, a sense of appreciation. In Shakespeare's Henry V, the king's greatest speech is before the Battle of Agincourt, a stirring rallying cry to his troops. Some may find this gung-ho or tub-thumping, yet there's no denying how, think, uh, no denying how, sing on its head, <laughs> I think there's a line missing. 
uh, makes it almost a privilege for these men to be part of the coming carnage. And for the simple reason that history will be made on that day, St. Crispian's Day, and these men will say that they were there, they helped make that history. As Henry puts it, he that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbours. Lots more in the same vein, but for Henry this day, read our own this year. And for those Agincourt survivors, <laughs> read our own survivors of COVID. We shall have lived through it. And when we say we were there, we, we were there, it will eventually be with a certain pride. That's human nature. Now, of course, for 126,000 people dead, as for the Agincourt dead, there is no pride. And as time softens reality, we'll also remember the empty roads of the first lockdown, the clean air, how sharply defined were distant buildings, the novelty of urban silences, the new sounds of birdsong, the sense of nature reclaiming its own, albeit briefly and albeit at terrible cost. We'll remember clapping on doorsteps, candles in windows, the powerful and humbling dignity of a centenarian's hundred garden lengths. We'll forget the humid pettiness, the squabbling, the squalid convergence, the political point scoring. We'll remember the best because the best is worth remembering. And simultaneously, here's a second landmark. This day marks 150 planet corona columns. 45,000 words and not one column date missed. Time for a break, dear readers. Thus far, it's been a hoot. As to the future, more news soon. Meantime, thank you all. And there is always the book. I would affirm that. <laughs> there is, of course, always the book. If you haven't got the book, this is it, Planet Corona, a mere eight pound. And you get it from Iron Press or In Press or online or call at my door or ring me up. You can get it. Yeah, if you want, if you want, uh, you can get a signed copy, which reduces its value by a half. <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen a gentleman without a beard, but with a splendid moustache. Who's that? I don't That's know. Tim. He's got, got striking things on. It's, it's, ah, it's, it is, it is, it is I. I'm, oh. I'm also not in the northeast. I'm, I'm in. I'm the, Tim Tribe. Yeah, a, yeah. Long, a long friend and an old college, right. college friend. Good We're both you, chairman of the RAG committee at Sheffield University. Isn't oh, he your accountant? Yeah. Well, Peter, I, you, as you know, I would love to come to your door, but I think I've already got the book, So, uh, but I may have others to distribute to my friends. Oh, well, that'd be good. That'd be great. <laughs> Who was talking there? Elaine, Whitesides. Oh, where are you? You must be on the, the other sheet, Elaine. Well, I, I'm somewhere. I can see me and I can see you. And oh, I there you are. You. I've got you down the bottom. Hi, Elaine. Sorry. I can see you. I've got you down the bottom. Elaine, Leave it alone. Elaine Whiteside is a, is a writer herself, a very oh, good writer you. herself. Thank you very much. Published by Iron Press. <laughs> Published by Iron Press. Published yeah, by my, Iron Press. My book's available on Iron Press as well, you should say. Yes. At the, moment, the, 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 the emphasis is on yours and it's, it's very good. Even when you read it twice, when you've read it every day on Facebook and then you read it in the book, it's just as good. Oh, well, thank you very much, Elaine. <laughs> Checks in the post. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope it's big. <laughs> the check's big, but the amount is small. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, please. No. <laughs> Do better than that. <laughs> yeah. no, we're, we're just terribly jealous that you are where you are and yeah, exactly, we, can't, yes. we can't really travel yet. Well, like yeah, it's not a bad place to live. Yep, yeah, it's not bad, is it? I, I tried it for 18 years and then I left. <laughs> well, the coast, the coast up here is uh, is a great place to live. Yeah. Uh, Joan exactly. Hewitt up the top there, she's a tireless campaigner for all things at the coast. Ooh, and I go out litter picking sometimes. But I think you're out every day, aren't you, Joan? Have you been muted? She's shouting at the void. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's no, Peter, I just want to say... Oh. Sending everyone who is in this Zoom a bottle of Marques de los Riojas, which is, I know, terribly expensive. It was a brilliant move. Has everybody else got a bottle? What's it called? Well, you sent it to us. You said, <laughs> come to the Zoom. It's called Marques de los Rios. Uh, and it's a Rioja 2016. But thank you very much, Peter. And did everyone, I else, <laughs> everyone else get one? 
Mine must be in the post. You send me one, John. Yes, anybody got one, Joan? Yes. <laughs> I'm on a budget. You got me something from Colour Codes Brewery. <laughs> Everybody get the chocolates. Everybody get the chocolates. <laughs> we got a carrot through the door. I don't know what that was. <laughs> carrot through the door. What a title, Harry. <laughs> Expect a poem. Yeah. Harry Gallagher uh, of late has been the most prolific poet I've ever known. So the word fantastic. Fantastic. Hey, fantastic. He's put some great stuff as well, sort of brilliant, all humorous, concerned, you know, really nice stuff. Can we see which, going, Harry? which one is Harry Gallagher? There he is. What Wait, big mouth. <laughs> oh, he's got yeah. a beard. Oh, Harry. <laughs> I, I'm beardless. He's beardless. Yeah, yeah. So he is. Never mind. Oh, you look he's lovely. From, he's actually from Middlesbrough, but uh, he did move. Trying to forget that. And he was also, also a very good actor. He's acted in several Cloud Nine. Shows. Oh, oh, brilliant! Yeah. But you don't That's do an acting now, are you? Do you? And a singer. I do. I do. I do all the songs. Shameless. Hey. Shameless. Move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm off tonight. <laughs> Oh, so nice. oh, buggy you then. That's the end of the compliments for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is sort of general chat now, if anybody wants to say anything. Well, I, I'll just say, I, th I thought that was a, a, a tremendous set of readings, Pete, and the, the columns themselves are fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, around exactly. your door to buy one off you. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Yeah. There's Dave Harmon now, whose, whose latest book is amazing, uh, Bone Music. Oh, brilliant book. Brilliant, brilliant book, Dave Harmon. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. My first he's, book, he's written book, lots of he's, he's written, first book written so book. many brilliant books. I bloody hate him actually. So he's trying to books. speak. Shut up. You know. Please let David Almond speak. Go on, David. My first ever book was published by Peter Mortimer. And my okay. second ever book was published by Peter Mortimer. Hey. 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 Despite that, look what's happened. <laughs> 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 And my first ever story was published in Iron Magazine. Oh, yeah. I think it was called Chickens, wasn't it? It was called Chickens. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was 12 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I remember you uh, arriving at my front door once when it was raining uh, to deliver a manuscript or something, you know. Yeah, yeah and then yeah. I just think those, those books, those first two books, Sleepless yeah. Nights and uh, Heaven. And Heaven. 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 Kind of heaven. Yeah, we've only got about two or three copies of them now. Yeah. They collect, they collect it, it was 12 years, I think, between the two books. There was, yeah. 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 Actually, not, there's very few people have had two books with Iron Press, you know, so. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. So we're. we're Peter Mortimer is a cultural hero. <laughs> yeah. He is. He is. He is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Quite remarkable. Yeah. George Jowett, there, we publish his. Uh, Scabrous. Scabrous <laughs> about the Brighton bombing. <laughs> and you also put my attempt to play to bed to sleep forever. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> Never again. Um, you have long, you know, as an editor, you have long correspondence with lots of writers, you know, that aren't particularly do with a book that's going to be published. Sometimes it's just feedback, you know, with the stuff that they're writing. And uh, being an editor, you know, sometimes I'm complimentary and sometimes I'm not. But actually, good writers, which George Jow is, uh, they take it. It's the bad writers who never take it, if, if there's criticism. You know, yeah, they... I was really pissed off, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was affronted because a few months ago, I had a phone call from this woman who sounded exceedingly drunk. She said, you bastard. I said, <laughs> you Peter Mortimer, you bastard. I said, who are you? She said, 40 years ago, I was in one of your... Creative writing classes. <laughs> you didn't like my poems. You <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, and I've not got over that. <laughs> Amazing, really. You know, I said, well, I, I can't remember. I remember what I said. You know, I've no idea what I said. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up, I, I ended up, uh, you know, making me peace with her, actually, after a bit. <laughs> But it's funny, you know, because uh, writing is very personal to people. You know, you realise that. So as, as an editor, I've always said, if people want to, to look at... 
and I won't just be like uh, the family said, oh, that's lovely. You know, if, they want, if they're serious about the writing, I'm happy to speak to them about it and I'll try and be constructive, but, I'm, you know, I won't, I won't sort of flam about. Not many people know, Mark. Hey? Not many people know this about Pete Mortimer, which is that his most uh, famous piece of writing was a rag magazine. <laughs> my first editorship. That's Roger yes, Lemon, ex-rag chairman of Sheffield University. And <laughs> copies of this rag magazine now fetch nearly 5p. <laughs> <laughs> but they've gone down that much, right? <laughs> Roger, it's great to hear from you again. I remember, Hi, Alec. Nice to see you. No, I think it may be more than 10 years since we met. But I distinctly, I would love to meet you again because I distinctly remember it's your round. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was coming. I thought that was coming. <laughs> Peter, can I just say, this is the most fragrant gallery view I've ever had. And when I say fragrant, it's, there was a woman poet early on when we were learning how to use Zoom who said, I was mortified, I farted, and my square lit up. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to point out that when I, I'm just speaking and I'm also eating pear. I just want to say that. I love that. That's, that's great. That's great. <laughs> I like the fact you had to put your hand up to talk there, John. <laughs> mortified something to do with Mortimer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It could be, it could be. Where's Kay Eason gone? Where's our host gone? I'm here, I'm here. Oh, are you? I can't Hello. see you. Oh, there she Go on again. Who's that? It's all right, yeah, I was just looking there. Did we get, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's funny, I know we don't want chat, actually. It's much better just speak, isn't it, rather than people typing things in. So that, we're, we're, nearly up, we're nearly up to our hour. Yeah. Has it, have anyone seen that picture of a post box? Yes, <laughs> you're about yeah. to put the Cham and Shanter on. Who's oh, that? Yeah. Only Bowers. Who was it? <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, 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 it's Olya Bowers. Yeah, I can see. Oh, Olya. Oh, hello, I am here. Was she not there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. In there, Olya. <laughs> love the dress, Olya. I love the dress. <laughs> well, uh, it's just my tribute to Boris Johnson. What? <laughs> far too red. Yeah, far too red. Oh, yeah. My son there, uh, Dylan and, and Magda, is partner as well. Yeah, yeah, yes. How are you doing? How are you doing, old son? Great, great. thanks, man. Thanks, 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 you know. Hey? That was great, thanks, man. Yeah, All right, thanks. For those of you who don't know, that's Dylan, my son. Oh, uh, hi, Dylan. Hello, hi, Magda. Magda. And, Magda. and Magda, his <laughs> Polish partner. <laughs> And uh, they're, a, they're a force of nature. They're a force of nature, those two. Force nature, of course. And Karma Coast, the CBD company, and uh, do lots of other things as well. Loads of other things. So I'm very proud of them. Oh, uh, and can I just say, it's lovely to see Bugman. Is that Ryan Siddle? Yay! 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 Ryan Siddle, brilliant well, musician. Well. Yeah, how you doing, Ryan? New CD out very soon, I think, haven't you? May time. Yeah, yeah, I have. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah. Right. Can... Everybody yeah. said yes at the same time now. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's some there's something out on Monday. Um, I'm just having a break now and watching this Zoom meeting, and then uh, I'll be going back to uh, mixing it and uh, changing this, changing it all, and worrying about it, and then <laughs> going back to the old bit, and then topping and tailing it, and you know as it goes, but. Um, yeah, it's been good, really nice actually. I like oh, the worry. one you did. I really like the one the the the, uh, the reading you did about uh, the uh, the Father Christmas one. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was a good one. That was my favourite one. <laughs> it, it was quite hard that when I was writing it because I kept thinking, "Damn, this isn't right." I thought you you, you can't be at all sentimental. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a miserable bastard. But I was going to go back to him as well, you know. <laughs> Don't push it close. <laughs> <laughs> How are we all doing? Right. Good. 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 Good.
somebody with the hand up? No, it's just hey. yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Peter, for the readings. Really enjoyed the book. And just keep them coming. If you can, be wonderful. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay. Oh, thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everybody. So I didn't get time to mention some people, but I really value you all being here. Talk very much. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Peter. Bye. Bye. Bye, Peter. Peter. Really enjoyed it, Pete. Peter. Soon. Thank you. Hi, Peter. It's yes. Mike. Mike Halsey. Hi. Hi, oh, Mike, yeah. Just wanted to say, this is the best Zoom meeting I've ever been to. Oh, bloody hell, that's great, Mike. Thank you. It is, because it... Well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Doing four team, that's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I missed that, I missed that. <laughs> no, good. OK, well, thank you. He's saying bye-bye, because it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Time. Bye. So I hope to see you all in the flesh soon. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Pop. Thanks, yeah. Peter. Cheers, 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 Bye. 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 And hopefully we'll see you in the in the library before too long. Thank okay, you very much. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. I didn't thank you for hosting it. You're welcome. You're very, very welcome. It's been great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all. Bye. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. night. Bye. Bye. Bye.